It's Thursday, October 22nd. Uh, damp, moist. It is warmer. It's like 55 and it's supposed to be low 70s, I think, this afternoon. Uh, I don't think it rained as much overnight as they were predicting, but it's, we're under a dense fog advisory right now, I guess. Uh, and it's not as foggy now as it was earlier. What I think that probably means is that trying to drill a cereal rye in the short term is going to be completely futile. Um, I don't think the ground is necessarily too muddy to go, but I think all the stalks and everything on top is going to be way too tough to get the rye underneath it um, and might be at risk of balling up in front of the tool bar. Actually, it looks like I'm getting on the lens on the camera just because it's so damp out there. Uh, so I don't know that that's going to be a good solution today. Uh, I might try to wash wagons, uh, although they also are not going to dry off. Although it sounds like it's going to be sunny tomorrow afternoon, um, so maybe we can wash them today. They get a little additional bath from the rain that's tonight, and then put them away late in the day tomorrow after the sun shines on them and dries them off for a while maybe. So that's one possibility. Um, I need to get some chemicals uh, pulled out of the storage shed and into the shop so that they're not at risk of freezing and uh, losing effectiveness when we go to use them. Um, so probably that's going to be my first order of business. Uh, I've got some grain bins to shovel out, so I think I might work on that in the short term. Um, and even if I don't actually get to drill any cereal rye in the next few days, uh, there are still some things that I need to get hooked up to have it ready to go. And I can potentially go ahead and get the things filled with seed um, so that it's ready to head to the field whenever conditions do get fit. So I think that's basically where we're at. Um, there's some other odds and ends that are still on the to-do list like replacing that dust burger bearing on the combine and uh, working on the four-wheeler. Uh, with it being a little earlier fall I'd really like to go do some soil sampling uh, if the weather cooperates in the next few weeks. I mean I think there's a pretty good chance that we'll get some more decent weather before winter comes, I guess. Um, and that has, it's been a few years since we've really had that following harvest. Um, so I'd like to pull some soil samples and kind of see where we're at on some things. Anyway, plenty of things to do. Um, not a lot of motivation to do it. I mentioned the four-wheeler and then went off on the soil sampling tangent. Um, so... I sort of haven't said anything about this for a while. Um, rebuilt the carb, uh, it still seemed to be losing gas. I haven't checked it for a while, but yeah, so we were full clear up to the bottom of that white plastic insert thing. And we're a good three inches below that now, which I mean, that's been a two week process, so it's not leaking out particularly fast, but uh, I have a feeling that that's all in the crankcase now where the oil belongs. Uh, I have not changed the oil because I wanted to kind of try to figure out what was going on with that and get it fixed. I uh, still can't exactly tell how it's getting into the crankcase. Um, with the carb rebuilt, hopefully it shouldn't be leaking uh, from the needle and seat on um, the float valve. Um, so it almost has to be coming either from the petcock, which kind of is supposed to have a uh, so basically, when I say petcock, the fuel shut off. So this is what switches you from uh, your primary to your reserve. So that if you, you know, are out in the middle of nowhere and your engine sputters to a halt, you still have a little bit of gas in that reserve tank, which is just a separate chamber inside the plastic uh, vessel here. Um, but there's like a vacuum line on that that's supposed to stop uh, gasoline from coming out of the tank unless the engine is running. Um, so it basically pulls a small vacuum and opens up like a check valve kind of a thing in there, I believe. Um, so that could be a problem, although it seemed like the vacuum line to the fuel pump was more wet. Um, so probably the next thing that I'm going to do, I mean, partly because I have the kit for the fuel pump and I don't have anything to work on the pet cock at the moment. Um, the fuel pump is up here on the frame rail up underneath the plastics. So uh, to get to it, I think we have to take the whole front fender stuff all off. Um, which I think means the battery has to come out and some other fun things. Uh, and there's a lot of busted fasteners on what holds some of this stuff together. So that'll be a good time. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't know, maybe I can get, uh, maybe I can get it out 
just reaching behind the plastic here. That might, that would be handy for sure. Um, so I might work on that today also. Well, after some deliberation and looking at this a little bit more, it seems that getting to the fuel pump on this is not going to be as bad as I thought it was going to be. And this sounded like more fun than my other things. So I think we're going to take it apart and see if we can put some new rubber pieces in it. Um, basically, there's a plastic or a screw into the plastic that holds the center fender well in that came out okay. Um, probably because it's into plastic and not metal, so it wasn't rusted. Um, but basically, this is what has to come off. So it looks like there's a couple bolts here that hold the bracket on. Um, and then, I mean, I could maybe try to take those out, but it's going to be a lot easier to get the ones that I can see. Um, and then basically, I think we have one of these is from, from the tank, and the other one is going to the carb. And then there's a vacuum line on the back side right there. Um, and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, one fuel pump off the bike. Uh, it was a little more of a pain than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I thought these bolts would have been straight into the, like a threaded insert on the frame, but it turns out they're on little rubber isolators, so there was none on the back side, and then two washers that fell off. But we're off. Uh, it does seem to be leaking gas. Uh, pretty bad out of the line from the tank, so I have a feeling that that cock is probably also part of the problem, but since I have the pieces to rebuild this, we're going to take it apart and put them in and see if it makes a difference. It seems I may have spoke too soon. I have parts. I don't think they're the right ones. Uh, as you can see, this is round, two bolt holes on the outside. The diaphragm and what I have here has five bolt holes, and it's way bigger than my pump. So, either I read the wrong thing or somebody had a description wrong. So after lunch, uh, continues to warm up, but super humid. Uh, I opened up the shop and basically the floor is now wet because it's getting condensation from being cold and humid and warm air. I'm gonna work on getting the rest of everything hooked up on here, so I need to get the electric clutch switch, uh, get the meters put in, and get the hoses or the seed tubes hooked up and then we might put some seed in it i doubt if i'm going to try to seed anything today because it looks like it's probably going to rain some more later but we'll see how things go well we're getting closer um i got all the seed tubes hooked up um tires checked although i still need to do the inside left rear on the tractor, uh, the valve stem is in a spot that I can't get to right now, so I need to pull the tractor forward and get it rotated back to the back where it's more accessible. Um, so I think the next step is basically to, uh, I need to grease a few things. Um, there's a few grease points, hinges on the toolbar. Uh, I think there's at least one on a uh, axle, one on the stub shaft, jack shaft for the transmission. Um, and then need to fire up the fan and make sure I'm getting air out the bottom of all the seed boots. Um, I was thinking that it was kind of almost seeming like it had dried off a little bit, but the clouds are very dark to the west, and it kind of just cooled off. So I think the front probably just came through or is coming through. Um, it was super calm, and the wind has come up, and it's gotten quite a bit cooler now like uncomfortably cool, but I'm probably about ready to put my sweatshirt back on, whereas I really didn't want it earlier. Um, but I think we're getting there. Um, seems not very likely that we're gonna see anything today, but might be ready to go to the field whenever conditions get fit thereafter. Good, looks clean. Uh, I've got the auger over here, got the mouse nest kind of cleaned out of it, and the wagon door opened up there, so we should be ready to start filling. Um, rye dust kind of does a number on me, so I'm going to mask up here, otherwise I'm going to be coughing for the next hour. Not filling super full because I don't necessarily want a huge amount of weight on the tires. 
The whole frame on this seed tender thing is a little lighter than it seems like would be ideal. Plus, it looks like it might be kind of wet when I'm seeding, so I maybe don't want a lot of weight for compaction reasons either. Well, I think we're gonna go try it. Uh, this might be short-lived because there's sort of some showers on the radar, nothing that looks like it's an in imminent threat of hitting here. Um, but probably gonna get some rain later today. Um, but I think we're at least gonna give it a shot. It seems like it's been windy enough today, even though the sun hasn't shined, that the ground has firmed up pretty decent. I think the stalks are still gonna be pretty tough. So I don't know how our penetration is gonna be uh, as far as actually getting the seeds into the dirt. Um, but we're gonna try it a little bit at least and see how it goes. And if nothing else, kind of do some calibration or pull a tube off and put a sock over it and catch some seed and kind of try to make sure that we're getting on somewhere around the rate that we actually want. Um, the transmission on everything should be set the same place it was when I ran cover crop last year, so I think it should be pretty close to what I want. Um, but never hurts to double check just in case the rye is a different density or something like that. So uh, we're gonna pull this train down the road a little bit and uh, jump in the field and see what happens. All right, we're set up for the sock test. So basically, I've got a sock cut onto the end of the seed tube. Um, we're gonna go up these end rows and catch some seed over a known distance or basically measure it on the GPS. Uh, I know that the sock weighs 1.1 ounces, so then I'll weigh it at the end, figure out the area that I would cover, which would be 15 inches wide by whatever length, uh, and then see where that comes out pounds per acre. Well, we're getting along pretty well, really, so far. Um, seem to be getting the seed underneath the uh, corn stalks for the most part, but I just started seeing some pretty good sized raindrops on the windshield here. Uh, our time may be coming to a close, but I'm at least gonna try to get a few more passes done and get kind of the steep hillside uh, seeded down is my hope. Uh, I haven't looked at radar yet, but it doesn't seem like we can see very far into the distance, which probably means there might be some precipitation between here and there. Um, but seating wise, things are going well. Um, the rate seemed to be about where we wanted it. Um, and other than a plugged seed tube right at the beginning, everything's been working pretty well. Kind of getting to a decent spot where I can stop. Uh, definitely didn't light the world on fire. The monitor says 17 and a half. Probably we'll have 18 by the time we get to the other end of the field. Um, 18 acres. Uh, and that's counting some overlap, but better than zero, and we know things are working, so that's a positive. Just wish it would have waited a day to rain, we could have got a lot done. I also, I don't think I've mentioned it in a video yet, but I might make it a point to get some front weights on this tractor before we're back out here, whenever. Um, it's not really too bad going down the road, but there's definitely been some times in the field that you can tell the front end is pretty light. Flashers here because we're headed out on the road. Um, so I think having some weight on those front wheels would definitely work better. Um, I also had a little bit of funkiness that I'm not exactly sure what the deal was, um, but basically was going across the field and all of a sudden the tractor did a hard left. Um, uh, I was on a beeline auto steer, um, so it should have just been keep should have kept going straight. Um, so that uh, definitely woke me up in a hurry. Uh, I wasn't sleeping, um, but even with auto steer, sometimes you have to pay attention. And I'm not exactly sure what was up with that. So I'm gonna have some things to work out. Um, I suspect there's a possibility that it could be related to the steering angle sensor um, because I've occasionally, or like when I've calibrated, sometimes it doesn't want to uh, finish that part. And I think there might be some flakiness in that angle sensor. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but, and I don't know for sure that that's what the issue was. Um, but after I, basically I grabbed the steering wheel and then hit the clutch pedal, but it still pulled me off quite a bit and then said steering heading error on the display. Um, so I'll have to look up and see what I can find out about that. Um, I've only got a mile to go home, so I'm gonna go kind of easy here and try not to throw too much mud on the tractor because it definitely was raining pretty good when I left the field. Um, wasn't really picking up on the wheels, but probably a good time to quit.